We thank thee, O Lord, for giving us this, our child. Help us to set him a good example in all we think or say or do. People are born in Dallas. The years that follow are filled with happiness and sadness. This is your city, Dallas. Dallas is a man-made town, and each man can find here an opportunity to make his life whatever he wants. We call our town Big D because it is big-hearted, open-handed, both friendly and progressive. Big D offers a place to work, to learn, to play, to worship. For each man to own his own castle and achieve his own goals. Dallas is the finest home on earth to raise a family. You work here, you have your home here, you raise your children here. Dallas lives and prospers through you, her people. The life of a city and her citizens are inseparable. With the passage of time, the faces of cities, like the faces of people, change. <laughs> we want, we expect the face of Dallas to change. We just can't believe our city is perfect as it is. I remember Dallas 20, 40, 50 years ago. Why, just before I was born, Main Street was a sea of mud. I can remember standing for hours in front of the old opera house to watch an armistice day parade. Tide Skettinger stands there today. I can remember when the horse and the mule were man's best friend. When to get to SMU was a Texas mile across the prairie. When the tallest buildings in town were the medical arts and the Magnolia building. Dallas has never stopped changing between then and now. Oh, there's been lots of changes come over Dallas. Change is not always easy. As we change the face of Dallas, it is our responsibility to see that it is changed for the better, for what we have created we can also destroy.
On April 2nd, 1958, the face of Dallas was changed through natural disaster. A tornado appeared out of the blue, and for 40 minutes, Dallasites watched it ravage their city. Dallas was helpless to stop or prevent, but Dallas rallied and recovered. Dallas is not alone in facing changes of nature or of man, past and future, which affect a city and its character. Other cities have faced, and faced recently, the same problems of change which Dallas now faces. They have met these problems with violence. The face of violence is the face of hate, unreason, cruelty, personal and civic irresponsibility. Their actions and the results speak in these films for themselves. This is the face of man-made destruction. Its counterpart is the face of fear, bewilderment, suffering, physical and mental. This face can be a child's face, your child's face. That children are the most deeply affected persons in times of disharmony and strife is borne out by the Dallas County Medical Society, whose spokesman is Dr. P. E. Lukey, Jr. We wouldn't knowingly hurt or frighten a child. And yet, as we have seen, violence does frighten children. They become uncertain and insecure. When children are frightened and insecure, they look to their parents or those they love and respect for reassurance and guidance. We know from our wartime studies that children can go through bombings, moving, cold, and hunger without any lasting effects if their parents were there. On the other hand, children taken from their parents and moved to safer places often became disturbed. Thus we see that violence frightens children. The pain, anger, Hysteria and fear is disturbing to them. They look to their parents or loved ones for support. If these parents represent violence or condone violence, then the children become very upset and disturbed. Disturbed children are sick children. They may not look sick or act sick, but they are sick. Medicine explains the child's need for security. Society must meet these needs and does so through the law, the law by which we live. From the county court of Judge Julian Heyer, Dean J.W. Ream of the Southern Methodist University Law School defines the law. The law is a system where the unfortunate stand as peer and equal with the most privileged. A court is a vehicle tested and refined over generations where two people equally sure of their morality can bring their disputes and dispositions can be made based on the facts and the law of their conflict so that each might continue to enjoy his rights and live together in the community with a mutual respect for each other's position. Here, the rules of organized society function. I'm Ralph Hartman, member of the Dallas Bar Association. I meet my opponent in court here within these walls where disputes are settled between our clients. 
I'm entitled to bring witnesses and to cross-examine my opponent's witnesses. This is where the witness sits as he tells his facts to the jury. This is the jury and where they sit as they listen to the facts. My client's opponent also is represented by a lawyer. I am Tom Hartnett. I am also a member of the Dallas Bar Association. This is where we lawyers sit. We prosecute, we defend, we argue before a judge elected by the people to stand impartially between myself and my opponent. The witnesses, who are laymen, bring, the, bring facts to the jury, who are laymen. The jury determines the facts. His Honor, the judge, then applies the law to the facts in rendering the decision. Violence cannot change a decision rendered within these walls. Once a decision has been made, it is the law. On April 6th of this year, the federal court decision became final that some degree of desegregation must by law begin in Dallas in the schools this fall. In spite of arguments, in spite of criticisms, in spite of personalities, the law is the law. Disagreement or dissatisfaction with any law should not and it must not be expressed by citizens in violence. In a democracy, there are always legal channels open to those who would prefer to change the law. These are the methods which a good citizen uses, not brickbats and stones. On these principles, Dallas stands. On these principles, the leadership of Dallas is firm. Through the Bar Association, the Medical Society, the Council of Churches, the Labor Council, from its elected officials and its newspapers, Dallas has found many voices, but with a single message. Dallas is a good city, and we want to keep it that way. We need all of our citizens to accept their civic and their personal responsibilities and to stand up and be counted for law and order. We need your help as your mayor and speaking for your city council. We pledge our assistance in this program and earnestly hope to have yours. Together, we will show America the Dallas way basically the responsibility for our children's behavior lies with us, their parents. If your child is to respect the law and act as a good citizen, he must be able to follow your example. You must be a good citizen. As a representative of 30,000 Dallas laboring people, I am instructed by our membership to make it very clear and certain where we stand. Labor recognizes its responsibility to all Dallas citizens and the community as a whole. We highly value active good citizenship and recognize fully the great influence that our city's good name has on job opportunity and a prosperous economy. We understand that a maintenance of civil peace is necessary if Dallas is to keep her good name. Dallas is indeed a good place to live, to work, and to raise our families. You can count on the labor force to keep it so. The editorial policy of the Dallas News is to develop an atmosphere of nonviolence. Nothing is gained by lawlessness. But a newspaper can do just so much. It can tell the people which way the cat is going to jump and hope that the people will take care of the cat. So each of you is an editorial editor. And in your words and actions, you help create a public atmosphere of calm in this trying period. Remember, the pressure of public opinion is like the atmosphere, 16 pounds to the square inch. All of us are in this boat together in the sense we all are opinion makers. As a responsible newspaper, the Times Herald will not condone or tolerate impulsive actions of any individuals or groups. 
We have only one basic elementary fact to face in preparation for desegregation in our public schools. It is simple, it is just, it is realistic, it is mandatory. Our people must maintain unqualified respect for law and order. Violence affects the whole community, just not, just not a few isolated segments of the school or business public. Violence not only disrupts business and education, but undermines the health and morale fiber of all citizens. Extremist elements and self-seeking individuals come into control, and the city's children are forced to bear alone a burden which is rightfully an adult responsibility. Every citizen has the privilege to live his life according to his own views, so long as he acts within the law. In private areas not related to the law, it is the right and responsibility of each individual family to establish his own values and personal standards. The wise parent prepares his child to accept and adjust to the changed school situation and at the same time establishes for his child values for private relationships. The person who resorts to violence is bad. Citizens who deserve the condemnation of his neighbors. He will be arrested as a lawbreaker. He will be deprived of the support and following of his neighbors. He will stand alone. There have always been a few individuals in any city whose cure-all for any problem is to meet it with violence. In Dallas, these few individuals will stand alone. If they do so act, they will do so in the face of a community of hundreds of thousands of law-abiding citizens who know that the problem of growth, of customs changed by law, however else met and solved, must be met and solved peacefully. In this knowledge, in the actions of good citizens acting in this certainty, the changing face of Dallas will remain unscarred. Murder, robbery, arson are crimes. Violence, civil disorder, riot are crimes equally punishable under the law. A law enforcement officer is obligated regardless of personal opinion to uphold the law and see that it is enforced. This will be done in Dallas. Every officer in the Dallas Police Department has been thoroughly trained in the technique of handling unruly crowds. The officers will perform their sworn duty. They will protect the rights of all citizens and preserve peace and order in our community. The police will devote their energies to controlling those few who do not have the judgment and character to obey the law. We know who those few are. 